<laughs> That's a long time ago. Like water droplets evaporating in the scorching heat. After I finished high school in 41. Years can seemingly disappear just as fast. That's when I was six years old. William Charles doesn't know where the time has gone. I had a bicycle and I put a mini mile on that thing. <laughs> and the living newspapers. The Hampton native who lives at the Chesapeake and Newport News is turning 100 years old. I never thought I'd do it. I didn't think I'd have lived this long. When you take into consideration what his first job as an adult was, Mr. Charles was lucky to reach 20 years of age. And I heard about Pearl Harbor. So I knew what was going to happen then. Six months after graduating high school, William was off to war. I didn't want to be drafted, so I enlisted. I figured I'd, I would be doing myself a favor and all, but doing the country a favor too. The 18 year old, who was always fascinated with flight, joined the Army Air Corps and began training. It was a great day. <laughs> That was a great feeling. <laughs> a year later, the second lieutenant was flying real missions against a real enemy in the Pacific Theater. When you get close to the target, yeah, you, you start seeing the enemy aircraft. It, it was very frightening sometimes. And when you see that fire coming for it, towards you. William piloted B-26 Marauders and A-26 Invaders on dozens of white knuckle missions barely above the ocean. Oh, about 10 feet, <laughs> 10 or 15 feet. Some flights were just too close for comfort. It was skip bombing, what they call skip bombing, where you go in real low and just skip the bomb into the beach. That's what we did a lot of that. Often, William and his crew would return to base, their plane riddled with bullet holes. But we never knew when we took off whether, whether we will get back or not. They were fortunate. Many of Mr. Charles's fellow airmen never came back. Mounting casualties were crushing. It was a bad feeling to know that some of your friends was, was killed in, in a crash. The military would rotate William home to Virginia after completing his required 25 missions, leaving his crew members behind hurt. I kind of resented the fact that I could leave and uh, Leave them behind. In August of 1945, William and the country could exhale. World War II was over. It was great to hear that the Japanese had surrounded. Following the war, Mr. Charles attended college, married, and had two children. He worked at what was the precursor to NASA. He would eventually manage and then own a lumber company. Well, it's all been very well, uh, I think, good. I don't never got in too much trouble. <laughs> As he approaches the century mark, Mr. Charles wonders where the years went. I don't know what's any difference. <laughs> I don't know what's any difference when I was 80 or 90. <laughs> this veteran is one of the nation's few World War II bomber pilots still living. That's a picture taken from the cockpit of this plane. William Charles counts his blessings he survived in the air. Yeah, it did. Um, it was a good airplane. It gives him an opportunity to look back on his life well lived on the ground. Well, I felt I accomplished a little bit. Well, great. I was, I was glad I did. I was glad I was able to serve.